Remember how, at the end of the last video, I said, that's everything you need to get your product made and to take it from an idea to a reality? Well, that's not quite everything. Because now you have a product that's ready to go, but actually no inventory to start selling. Oh dear. This is where the next stage comes in finding funding for your idea, and it's really a rather important stage. The good news? Once again, the internet has come to our rescue and made all this as easy as it can possibly be. And in this case in particular, we're going to be using crowdfunding to make our money. Crowdfunding simply means that we're asking the community to fund our products, and the most famous example of this is Kickstarter. The best part is that you don't have to give away any percentage of your business or your profits. Backers on crowdsourcing sites get involved because they want to place pre-orders and because they want to see your ideas come to fruition. This is famously how projects like the Oculus Rift came into being. Finding an investor means giving away a share of your business. Getting a loan means taking a serious risk. But crowdfunding? There is zero risk and no downside. And this is why more and more makers are now finally able to see their ideas come to fruition when previously it would never have been possible. There are other crowdsourcing options out there though and other funding options too. The most obvious place most people will start is Kickstarter, which is the best known crowdfunding site on the web and possibly largely responsible for the strategy's current popularity. Now, while Kickstarter might be the most famous and provide you with access to the biggest number of potential backers, this can also be a bad thing in that it means you'll be facing more competition and you'll need to follow stricter guidelines. However, Indiegogo, which you'll find here at Indiegogo.com, um, is a slightly more lightweight alternative where it can be easier for beginners to get noticed. Then there's some other options. The first one is crowdfunder.co.uk. And while Kickstarter rules the roost in the US, until recently it was less accessible for those based in the UK and Europe. And this site here, crowdfunder.co.uk, is aimed to take advantage of this by focusing on the UK market and has now found a niche as a great place for charities to raise money and for British entrepreneurs to find backing. Then there's Small Knot, and Small Knot is a relatively young crowdfunding organisation that looks at businesses rather than projects and encourages users to invest in small local organisations. And they're based in Brooklyn, New York, and you can read more about them on their Facebook page. And then there's Rocket Hub. Now, Rocket Hub functions very similarly to Kickstarter but has become particularly popular among musicians and philanthropists. And you can read more about it here at rockethub.com. Note that crowdfunding sites do have their drawbacks and limitations. For instance, crowdfunding only works if you can raise the money you've set yourself as a target. At least that's the case with Kickstarter. Indiegogo does not have this rule. These platforms are also becoming increasingly saturated, which means you're going to need to have a very good and unique idea and then do a lot of promotion on top of this to make it a reality. There are likewise many more funding options for raising capital. One option is simply to find investors and there are many websites that can help you do this. For example, AngelList, which you can read about here at angel.co, is a website that works similarly in some ways to a crowdfunding site, except that the investors do get some money and some share of your business. However, they can back you with small amounts of cash, which means that you're not just approaching massively wealthy individuals and companies. Creating a profile on AngelList is a great way to learn about investors and to let them start getting to know you, even if you don't end up looking for money on the site. 
Other sites like Crowdcube, which you can find here at crowdcube.com, and Angel's Den, which is angelsden.com, can also do similar things. Note that it's also possible to get funding at other stages of your manufacturing. For example, you can get funding from business angels and accelerators at the pre-seed stage of your business, the point where you're still prototyping. Look at companies like tandemcap.com and hax.co for more information. Seed capital is the money you get to turn your idea into a reality, at the industrialization phrase. At this point, you can get money from crowdfunding or from investors, after which you enter the growth phase. Growth phase funding is what happens in the first few years of your business and is referred to as Series A, Series B and Series C funding. Series A tends to raise anything from $1 to $10 million and is riskier for investors as you don't have much data backing your potential for success. Then you have Series B, which is mainly about scaling, and you can bring in much more money at this stage. Finally, Series C is for the fully mature business, at which point an acquisition might even be on the cards, which is ideal if you're looking for an exit strategy. After this comes the IPO, or your initial public offering. At this point, you can consider your business a roaring success, and you don't need me helping you anymore. Otherwise, you can find other ways to fund smaller projects. One option is bootstrapping, which means earning capital from a side business and funneling this into your own hardware manufacturing. Alternative, you can get a bank loan, you know, even PayPal offer business loans now, or you can even use a credit card loan. Just make absolutely sure that you've tested the market for your product and you know you're going to make money back before you take out loans. Then there's always the bank of mum and dad or friends and family. If you have a good idea, they might want to be part of it. 